Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the baseline track video for February. Um, today we're going to be looking at a really, really cool exercise that is really beneficial when you're playing a baseline with longer notes. And for those of you who haven't thought much about this, think about maybe a song you play with a band or you play in the jam. Um, a lot of the time they're slower in tempo, like a ballad, something like that, um, where it's, you know, the texture isn't so like, go get them, edge of the beat, you know, the front edge of the beat. It's a little bit more laid back. It's calm, you know, it might sound something like this. Um, how about like, don't this real look rough and rocky? Um, Darling, I have come to tell you, though it almost breaks my heart. You know, it's relaxed. Um, and it can be kind of mournful like that song as well, but more importantly for us, those bass notes are long, which means the note connects to the following note. There's no space in between them. And um, we're gonna be practicing doing that, particularly on the open strings today. Um, because playing open strings, like I said in past videos, is a great way to play bluegrass and folk bass. I think um, it's the right kind of sound for the genre. So looking at open strings is always really important. So there's two different ways that we mute our notes to make sure they connect to one another, but they don't go on too long. You know, because if you, if you played it without muting it, it would sound something like this. You know, notes are ringing together, um, which is not what you want. Um, you want the connected sound, but it's almost like you're a bass vocalist, you know, and you can only sing one note at a time. That's kind of the concept. Um, when you're going down the bass, that's like from the high G string down to the low E string, you actually have to use your left hand to mute the strings. So you can go ahead and play that open G with me. When your right hand plays the D string next, your left hand comes down only on the G string. I'll do that one more time. G, D with the G mute. Then you continue that pattern. Right hand's on the A, left hand's on the D. I'll do that again from the top. And then lastly, the E with your right hand, the A with your left. You know, so you're stopping the string above while playing the string below. That is actually the more challenging of the two directions because on your way back up, your right hand actually does the work for you. Kind of makes sense, right? You play that E string and then at the very last second, right before the, the next bar, um, or next note, you're gonna play that A. And because your finger will come down on the E, it automatically mutes it. So you don't even have to worry about your left hand. I can just keep my left hand free when you're going up the string, up the strings, check it out. The important thing is that you're, you're waiting till the very last second to put your hand down. Otherwise you're gonna get kind of a choppy space in between those two notes. It'll sound something like this. You know, you gotta wait. Your hand can just kind of float as close as possible to the string, then hit it. So this is the first version of this exercise. And I'm gonna present three other ones that are a little bit more challenging. The patterns are a little bit more challenging. Um, but this whole thing sounds something like this. Do it one more time. So you're really going for that connected sound, you know, very important um, when you're playing, you know, a ballad or something in that style. This also works really well for waltzes, you know, which I mentioned in one of my uh, first ever videos last year. So. so that's the first version of this pattern. Um, 
but of course you can do it a lot of different ways. You know, obviously the, the descending version has all the mutes in this one and the ascending version is all right hand mutes. Um, but you can change it up. Like let's say you go, let's hop strings. So the first one will be open G, open A, and you still gotta use your left hand. But then you go to the D, no left hand, down to the E, left hand. Um, and then you start on the E again. <laughs> e, up to the D, using your right hand, to the A, left hand, G, right hand, D, left hand on the G. Uh, and in the notation below, uh, you'll be able to read all this so you don't have to listen to me talking about right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. And by that, obviously, I mean what, what hand is actually muting the previous note. That's what I mean by that. So um, you're always using your right hand <clears throat> to play the notes, you know. Um, so I'll just do that whole thing again. This is the second version. Um, third uh, is jumping all the way from the G to the E and then playing those internal strings. That one's a little weird, you know? Um, and then the last one is playing G and D together, and then jumping to the E and doing the A. Obviously you can come up with, you know, patterns all yourself. Um, you know, there's a lot of different combinations of these strings you can work with. Um, but those are the four I wanted to present today. Um, just ways to kind of expand your knowledge and your facility playing open strings um, that are all connected. So thanks so much, y'all. Have a great one, and I'll see you next time.